Hello and welcome back to another segment of Community Lens, a production of Somerville Neighborhood News. Uh, we have a great show here today. We are joined in the studio with Jess Bloomer, who is the Deputy Director of Groundwork Somerville. We're going to chat with her and learn a little bit more about the organization itself, any signature programs, and pump up one of my favorite uh, Somerville annual events, which is the Maple Syrup Boil Down, and then all the other fun festivities related to that. And you can find out how you can help support the organization as well. So, so welcome uh, down to the SMC studios. Jess, it's great to see you. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, we have known each other for a good handful of years now. And um, you're, you're a very passionate, hard, diligent uh, staff member over at Groundwork Somerville. And we're lucky to have you. Um, Somerville Media Center has partnered a lot over the years with Groundwork as well in different capacities. For those, I'm clearly versed on what Groundwork Summerville's right. mission is and some of the awesome programs. For those who don't know, what is what is the pitch for people just to kind of be like, oh, wow, what a yeah. great resource. Yeah. Um, well, thanks so much for having us because one of the things that we really focus on is connecting to our community members. So we're excited to get to share our work with everyone out there. Um, so Groundwork has been around since uh, 2000, so coming close to 20 years that we've been in our community. And we uh, call ourselves an environmental and food justice organization. So we're working really hard on connecting people to each other um, and then also helping people connect to green spaces in our community and to healthy and affordable food resources in our community, um, really focusing on social justice issues that affect all of our community members. Um, and so what that kind of looks like on the ground, we have um, several programs, but our flagship programs include um, the Green Team, which is uh, our youth employment program, where we hire usually about 15 to 20 teenagers every year to work with us on our projects, really focusing on urban agriculture and food access, as well as environmental justice and environmental stewardship and civic engagement. Um, so that's a key program. You'll see young teenagers riding around in shirts that look just like this one, but <laughs> are green. Um, and you can see them out at South Street Farm, where they grow 2,000 pounds of food every year. They sell that at our Somerville Mobile Farmers Market, and they really help um, bring food to the community that way. Wow. Um, should I tell you about all of our programs now? Just dive into let's a few other ones? Let's dive into it, because I know you're also a steward of several different sites among the public school systems, too, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we have our green team that are not only supporting South Street Farm, growing all this food, but they're also helping us support the school garden. So with them, with a bunch of other community members, we support 10 school garden sites across the city. We're really proud to say that um, every K through 8 school in Somerville right now, plus Next Wave Full Circle, have a, a school garden garden that their students can use as an educational resource and teachers can use to support the academic learning as well as social emotional learning and um, you know also just kids learning where the food comes from. So we uh, are really passionate about building those programs out so that young people in a city as dense as ours with as little green space as we have have a little piece of green space to call their own in each of these school gardens. Um, and with uh, our staff as well as our AmeriCorps and our um, community volunteers were able to provide about over 3,000 student hours of, of hands-on education in those spaces every year. Wow. Um, and yeah, I really feel like it's a, it's really part of, when we talk about social justice, part of that and environmental justice is access to green space. We know about all the positive benefits that, that can sort of give our young people um, as they're growing up in our city. Yeah. Wow, that, that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And knowing uh, the, the impact of all the work and how, uh, a very passionate, tight team over at Groundwork Somerville, because how many full-time staff people? Yeah, we're just a team of four full-time staff members. Um, we're really lucky to get to work with so many you know, part-time folks who come through, and then also so many volunteers. Um, and just a, a big shout out, one of the most exciting programs that we're working on right now is we're able to bring on mentor farmers oh, who are wow. teaching our green team members how to grow, and through our school gardens, teaching young people how to grow crops that come from all over the world so that we can better make food accessible at our markets that is more culturally relevant to our communities here so we are you know we're a team of just four full-time staff members but we have you know five mentor farmers who are helping teach us how to grow food that's really the, the food folks want to see at the markets as well so we rely so on impressive lots of people to help make it all happen <laughs> that's usually the crutch of nonprofit organizations right. there's there's the army of uh, volunteers and supporters behind behind the the full-time staff so um, and that you mentioned the world crop garden which uh, or the World Crop Program, which I know the Somerville Community Growing Center 
um, another hat that that I wear and that right. we've also <laughs> collaborated on. Um, we had a we had a, a component of that there, so that was a part of like an educational enrichment. Yeah, we were too. really excited uh, to be able to partner with the Growing Center and have some of our mentor farmers come to that space because you know not everyone gets out to South Street Farm where we are demonstrating some right. of these crops. Um, and just knowing that that it's like every every part of our community, we want it to be as accessible as possible. And, and part of that environmental justice, food justice theme is, mm -hmm. you know, not just that there's a garden, but that it's it's accessible and relevant to all of our community members. So we were really excited awesome. that the Growing Center, and I know that for you know many many years, the Growing Center has had that as part of their theme too. Like y'all have been growing culturally relevant vegetables for longer than I've been around too. So that <laughs> is a, a theme that's re it's come back into our community again and again. Is that need to support um, you know definitely our vibrant immigrant community here and, and the diversity of our community in Somerville. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to continue to celebrate the the rich diversity that is here in Somerville even if there are challenges as we're very aware of around displacement mm -hmm. which is a huge concern and, and a really impressive um, I guess goal for for the youth who do attend some of the community meetings and they speak out about those exact issues mm -hmm. too so it's about they speak on environmental food justice but I also hear them speaking about how um, just being able to live in Somerville is is a concern as well and the affordability of that and how food justice plays into affordability and it's just, it's all, it's very deep. <laughs> totally, it's so interrelated. Yeah. And I think, you know, when we talk about our youth program, um, you know, it's a job skills program, but we really focus on projects in urban agriculture, you know, environmental justice, but then this civic engagement piece is sort of the third aspect of what we're working with our teenagers on. And that's really where we ask them to tell us, like, what are the issues that mm. you're facing and you care about? And, and how do we use our time together to advocate about those about those issues? And, and definitely attending city council meetings um, and attending you know any sort of um, act like activity or, or outreach event that we can help them raise their voices up and, and, and share what's important to them and, and displacement is definitely one of the issues we hear again and again and um, really think that that's so interrelated with the other issues that we're working on yeah um, that's great what a what a very uh, involved introduction and there's so <laughs> many layers to what you all are doing which is really important um, and one of the things that we wanted to kind of pump up today is the Somerville Maple Project, mm -hmm. Maple Syrup Project, um, which obviously has a lot of different partners involved. Do you want to talk about a little bit of its history and and all the different people who are involved with it today? Yeah, definitely. So again, to shout out a collaboration with the Somerville Growing Center, um, you know, the Maple Syrup Project has been around for over over 15 years I um, that we've been and that in Somerville there has been this maple syrup sort of celebration of the maple sugaring season and edu environmental education component of this and community gathering piece of this as well. So um, uh, in partnership with Tufts University and the Somerville Growing Center and Groundwork Somerville, we've been tapping local maple sugar maple trees and we did that again this year um, on January 27th. We went out and I think about 100 community members came out and helped us wow. to tap these trees, um, which was really exciting. It was a beautiful day. We actually literally drew Drilled in and sap started dripping out of the tree. There were kids there <laughs> catching it and licking the That's sap so out of the tree. It was amazing. Yeah, we were like, it actually does work. <laughs> so um, we've been doing that. So that's you know over 15 years that that's been happening, where we we tap these trees over at Tufts campus. They're an amazing community partner to let us do this. We hang our buckets there and collect sap all throughout the season, um, or at least through the next six weeks, we'll be collecting sap there. That's again, community members are coming out and helping collect mm -hmm. that sap and bring it to um, to our refrigerator and freezers. We're partnering with Project Soup. They're another great community partner who's helping us store that sap. Um, and that's been happening for, you know, several years as well. Um, so that whole sugaring process where we tap the trees, we collect the sap, that's happening. That's one side of this program. Um, and then at the same time, right now as we speak, there are 25 amazing trained volunteer uh, community educators who have gotten trained with us and are now teaching in all the second grade classrooms in Somerville. Wow. They're all the second grade classrooms are invited to participate and um, when they sign up to participate we have two educators go in four times over the course of a month and give uh, about an hour long lesson that ties the maple sugaring theme to an academic lesson in their um, in the second grade curriculum. So tied to math or science or social studies or ELA, you know, they practice graphing by looking at the temperatures and creating bar graphs around temperature or they practice science by looking at the layers of the tree and deciding how deep they 
can drill in right. to do the sugaring. Um, so that happens, all of these students are getting these four lessons in the classroom, and then as a culmination, they get to come out to our farm this year. It's usually at the Growing yeah, Center, know. but exciting things are Under happening there. <laughs> and good things are happening there, yeah. but the South Street Farm's a great Yeah, great we're excited place. to invite folks to come on down to South Street Farm, which is at 138 South Street. Um, and we're going to be hosting the boil down there. So for the first three days, uh, um, we have the students come out on, we organize buses to bring them to the farm so they can actually see that sap that we've been collecting all month long boiling in our boiler, which was built by the Somerville High School students, which is amazing. Very heavy. I've helped to move that. The moving that, center. even just moving oh it half a mile was <laughs> very intense. It's like 25 people. Yeah. Um, so we'll be boiling sap there for four days. We're going to have um, students uh, come out and see that. They'll get to participate in a huge interactive sort of field trip there, taste that. Um, maple syrup that we're making and um, then that final day on the 16th Saturday March 16th is the community day so Yay. anyone can come bring your families it's a really family friendly event there'll be music there'll be pancakes with syrup there'll be maple tea where you get to actually make Ooh. tea with the hot sap that's boiling it'll fun. be sweeter later it's in the day it's a super fun event it's very <laughs> it's, it's awesome. like it screams Somerville and community and it's, yeah. just, it's a feel good one yeah so we'd love folks to come out to that and it's a really exciting way to kind of close it out Wonderful. So my, my quick question before we um, just en encourage people to get more involved with the Groundwork Somerville organization is, how easy is it to make syrup, though? Yeah, that process? it is so easy if you have time. It is <laughs> really possible if yeah. you have time and access to like a pretty strong flame. So basically, we'll take all of that. You you in your backyard could tap a maple tree. It doesn't have to be a sugar maple. You could even tap a different type of tree. Um, but once you have that sap, the key thing is that it's a 40 to 1 ratio. So you need 40 wow. gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. That's why it's so expensive. Sure. So as long as you have the time to boil that down, you just watch it boiling boiling it'll eventually turn into syrup the key is that you have to be really careful right at the end you don't want to burn it so once all that water is boiled off you're left with the syrup so this is it's a labor of love it's I a labor mean, of love it actually makes you really appreciate the amount of work and time and totally. energy that goes into it and this is a fundraiser yeah so so it is you can um, I mean definitely the community event is is free and open to the public right. we love a donation if you can make it happen we know that it costs us about five thousand dollars to run the whole project do all the education do all the community mm -hmm. events so we're always hoping folks can help support um, but at that community day definitely no one needs to pay it's open to everyone we do have two additional fundraisers that help support the program which I'd love to Please. shout out um, on February shout them out. yes <laughs> on February 18th uh, uh, we will be having um, the independent right over here here is going to open up. They don't usually open up on Mondays, but you know it's a holiday, so they're going to open up for us and have a maple brunch. It's delicious. You can come out, and then a portion of the proceeds of that day come um, back to this project. So they're a great partner. And then Aeronaut is going to take some of our sap and make it into a maple beer. Aeronaut Brewery, also right up the street. Um, on April 14th, they will be having a sap on tap where you can taste that beer, buy a waffle, and have brunch there. And that's also a fundraiser for this event. So oh my gosh. Um, that'll be a great opportunity to support the program as well. Cool. And uh, last but not least, just ways obviously people can come out to these various events and activities and support y'all for ongoing support you know, if you want to just make that that plug there. Yeah, totally. I mean, everything is helpful, whether it's your hands that you want to come out and join our volunteer days. We have monthly volunteer days. You can check those out on our website. May 4th, we'll have the big spring cleanup, and that would be a great time to have people come out and really help um, just hands-on. We are always interested in, you know, in-kind donations if people have materials that might support some of our programs. And then definitely um, being able to connect us to people who might be able to support financially our programs or make a donation yourself on our website is amazing. We're currently really trying to fundraise the last little bit for this maple program and also we're really excited about an initiative to build out our, um, our green team leaders program where we're actually going to be able to hire green team graduates to be the leaders of their um, you know the next green team in line and it's just such a key part of our mission so those are great ways to support us um, and we'd love to just see everyone out at our events and, and join us in the effort to keep our city becoming a cleaner, greener, healthier, more equitable place. Thank you so much for sharing Thank all of you. that. <laughs> um, clearly, a lot of great ways to be an ambassador out there and to support y'all. Um, everything that uh, Jess just said is on the screen. We will make sure that people get out there, and I will be there. I will be hopefully enjoying those the maple brunch and also at the event.
Awesome. So, um, awesome. Thank you for joining again, Jess. And if you all want to get out there and get involved, um, please do. It's a great organization. And with that, we are out.